So let's get the case off and see what the leak is. So whoever's been here before hasn't actually left any paperwork or anything. And I think they just, they soldered that cap on to make the next person's life more difficult because they didn't get the repair or the new install or whatever they were after, which is uh, a bit petty, but let's try and see where this leak is coming from. So look, Good evening people, it's Tuesday the 11th of November and it's currently 8.15 p.m. This is not my first job, it's my last job. The job I was on today, I was helping out Cara, we were working on some big system. I don't know if I, it would have been worth recording it, there was a lot of things that we had to try and resolve. We got the job done anyway. Uh, long story short, it was a massive house in Fulham and they had four circuits coming off of Lolo Seda and one of the circuits just wasn't getting hot and the wiring was all wrong as well so I had to sort out the wiring and then we ended up replacing one of the pumps and everything started working so yeah that was a nice little win just been and done an expansion vessel on a valent on my way to here because I'm coming from Fulham doing the lap of the A406 so I picked up a breakdown in North London because look it is silly season and next week it's going to be getting even colder apparently it's going to be going to single digits so that's when the real cold is going to start and that's when i reckon things are going to get even busier so i'm just trying to basically knock out as many jobs as i can before it gets stupidly busy the job i've come to now has actually been referred to me by another fellow gas engineer it's a relative of his and he's up he's based in milton Keynes. it's nav from gasline so if you're if you guys are on instagram you can look up gasline you'll find him on there but his relative has got a Valent Ecotech Plus 831, the one of the first ones, I think it's about 17 years old, and it's been shut down, someone's been around, and apparently there's a CO leak and there's a water leak or something. They weren't able to give much information about where the CO leak was coming from. Apparently the person who came here wasn't actually able to find where it was leaking from, but he picked up CO somewhere. My guess is it's probably the turret seal, because on the valence, I've not really had CO leak anywhere else. Either the turret seal or that condenser, which I replaced on the job that I done yesterday, which incidentally, I don't have another condenser if it is that. And I also replaced the turret seal on that one as well. So I'm thinking, have I got another turret seal left? I hope I do. And if it is that, then I can get them up and running tonight. But I'm, I don't know if they're gonna be okay with me recording. So that's why I'm just sort of doing this little intro in the van. Let's get into the job and if, this, if they're happy for me to record, you'll see what I do next. If not, then this video is pointless. <laughs> right, here we are. This is the 831. Now, the first thing, which is really annoying, is whoever's come and capped this off, right, you can't knock them from doing a proper job, but why would you solder a cap on? Why not just put a compression on? Because now, where there's that solder snot, I can't even cut it from there. They've been kind enough to leave the old tail on there but as soon as I cut that below that solder cap that's then going to leave this pipe too short because I bet you yeah that's meets up there so now what I'm going to do I'm going to do a drop test first obviously and then I'm actually going to remove that gas cock as well because these gas cocks are I think they're like 10 mil bore inside so that's obviously firstly restricting the gas supply to the boiler which doesn't help as it's on 15 mil anyway so I'm just going to put two compression couplings, bit of pipe, and then back onto there. There's also a leak from this boiler as well, as you can see it's dripping on the left hand side. So let's get the case off and see what the leak is. So whoever's been here before hasn't actually left any paperwork or anything, and I think they just, they soldered that cap on to make the next person's life more difficult because they didn't get the repair or the new install, whatever they were after which is uh, a bit petty, but let's try and see where this leak is coming from. So look, on here, we've got the G10 replaced. Now I'm suspecting here, look, I can see a bit of crusting on the turret seal. So I reckon that's where he's been picking up the seal. The condensate is fine because that's sitting on the 
rubber. This has still got the old rubbers on it. So it's not going to be split from there. Now, what is actually leaking? We've got a new diverter valve on there, so that's fine. We've got drip coming from this left-hand side. Is that... I'm suspecting that flow elbow. Just trying to figure out where the drip is actually coming from. Where it's, well, it's actually wet. Because I've actually, literally, I think last week picked up. Is that wet down there? Or am I just imagining it? Oh, I do need to find where this drip is coming from, but let me go and do a drop test first. Ah, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. We've got water there. Where's that coming from? Is that the AAV? AAV does look like it's been passing. But is that what's leaking right now? Or is that coming? It's not coming from the diverter, is it? I think it is. Right, we'll do that in a minute. First things first, let's do a drop test and then try and sort this gas pipe out first. Right, little update, we've found the leak. It's coming from the plate, well, the plate support. So let me focus. I don't know how clearly it will zoom in, but literally there to the left of it, it'll probably stop dripping now. And I, shall I tell you why? These screws were loose. So I've just tightened that one up. Got a good quarter turn in it, but this top one, I've just tried to tighten it, but I haven't. I'm gonna show you just how loose it actually is. Let's move this cable out of the way so you guys can see. Right, just look. Yeah, I haven't actually done anything. That's been that loose. I'm now tightening that up. Let's check this side. Those are tight. That's tight. But these two were loose. So now I'm going to do a drop test and then when I come back I'll check if that's still dripping or not. Right, what I've actually done, I did actually just end up bending a bit of 15mm. I couldn't be bothered putting extra compression fittings on so I just went to the back of the van, bent a bit of pipe. So we've got one clean joint on there. I've just done a drop test, that's sound. Analyzers purging, let's put the boiler on and let's find this carbon monoxide leak. There is still a bit of residual water that's from the coming from the back of the boiler. That it has stopped leaking now. So that's just whatever water was pulled behind there. So I'm gonna get a, a few little drips. Let's now run a hot tap. And Do you know what? I don't want this to fall. Put it like that. This is where I'm suspecting we've got our CL leaking from. And yeah, there we go. Turret seal has failed. That's all it is. So let's get that swapped out and let's get this boiler back up and running. Right, that's the turret seal replaced. You can see it was definitely perished. And I've also changed the flu seal going off the elbow as well. So like I said, I'm, I'm able to, I've got a way now of doing it by not having to disturb the actual elbow, leave the elbow connected to the turret, pop the whole thing off, just disconnect it from the horizontal bit and you can get the whole thing out, replace the seals, pop it back together. Let's turn it back on. Let's run a hot tap. 
So, and wait for it to fire up. There we go. Oh, it's fired up. Right, 20.8, 20.9, zero ppm. Uh, hot water temperature, let's let that ramp up. So we don't want anything to change on there. Which so far, so good. Let's just stick that around the back as well. Lovely jubbly. Right. 26.9 checks. Boiler stays on. Let's go.